Hey everybody, my name is Michelle and I hope you are ready because today I'm going to do the biggest book haul I have ever done on this channel. I haven't done a book haul in a little while. I think the last one was in April or something like that. But that means that because I haven't done a book haul in so long, I now have a lot, a lot of books to haul. I have more than 30 books. I think it's 33 books and it's just, I'm looking at the pile next to me it is insane. It is so much. And that is how we've ended up with this video. My biggest book haul ever. It is going to be a long one. It's going to be an intense one. I hope you can understand that I cannot give like a long detailed synopsis for all of these books. Because first of all, I don't know the synopsis of all of these books that well. And secondly, it I want this video not to be too long like let's keep it a reasonable length let's not make it two hours long but yeah massive book haul lots of books um i think you probably know the drill to have some order in the chaos i've tried to organize them kind of by genre not chronological in the way i bought them because it has been so long since i've bought some of these books so that would have been a bit too difficult i've tried to put them together when it comes to genre so you can hopefully <laughs> sort of find some order in this chaos and you can hopefully enjoy this video i do love book hauls i do love filming book hauls so it's going to be a lot of fun i hope you are excited as well grab a drink grab a snack go and sit and relax and uh, get ready for this massive massive book haul so the first category is thrillers because it was summer as you probably know it has been summer in 2021 but i usually really love to read trailers during the summer which is why i bought a couple of them because i really felt like reading trailers and then i read only one of these books and the rest i still have not read yet so hmm, maybe it wasn't the best reading summer ever but i still ended up with a lot of trailers so those are featured now in this haul and the first one is no exit by taylor adams this book is about a girl named darty who gets stranded in a blizzard and then she sees this car where she thinks a girl has been kidnapped in that car but since there's a blizzard there's no way to contact anybody there's no way to call the police so it's kind of a very tense situation this book popped up so much when i was researching some trailer books to read because um, apparently a lot of people really love this one so i bought it originally during the summer even though it's set during a blizzard and that's probably also why i didn't pick it up during the summer because i feel like it's going to be a bit more suitable for autumn or winter but it still sounds like so much fun like a very good trailer which i love every once in a while and i hope the book is going to be as tension filled and as exciting as the premise sounds next book i got is the one by john mars and this is one that i've actually already read the one is about this concept that uh, in our world there has been a discovery that everybody has a certain gene and with that gene you can discover your genetically a perfect match perfect love match i have to say so there's this website it's called the one and you can find the one person who is completely meant for you this book then follows five different people who have recently taken that test and um, may or may not have been matched with their uh, one true love and even though it sounds like a wonderful concept on paper it turns out that there are actually a lot of problems with this because what if you're already married or you find somebody who is not the same age as you or you find somebody um, that is completely like on the other side of the world. So there are a lot of problems when it comes to finding the one, even though apparently there's this one genetic perfect match. I read this. Uh, I had a lot of fun reading it. It was so much like it was so entertaining. It is not a masterpiece, but it was very, very entertaining. So I'm very happy that I bought this one. Uh, and yeah. I think I talk about it in my August wrap up. No, not August wrap up because I haven't done August wrap up in my July wrap up. Next trailer is Relic by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. And this is the first book in a detective crime series book series. In this book, there's going to be a new exhibition in the Museum of Natural Histories in New York. But shortly before that, somebody is found murdered. And it actually looks like uh, this person has been brutally murdered by some of the uh, dinosaurs that are in the exhibition which is kind of strange i'm guessing that it's not supernatural and there's just like a human component to it but i'm not really sure 
Anyway, it's a detective novel, a murder mystery. I really hope to read this one during autumn because uh, I do love murder mysteries and this one actually sounds perfect for October and it's also on my autumn TBR. And since it's the first book of a series, uh, I do hope that if I enjoy it, I might find the other books in the series very enjoyable as well. Next one is False Witness by Karen Slaughter, the latest Karen Slaughter release. Uh, as you probably know, I do love a good Karen Slaughter book every once in a while. She is a famous thriller murder mystery writer. Her books are usually quite graphic and uh, feature a lot of very horrible crimes. False Witness is about two sisters who 20 years ago did something very horrible and now in the present it is coming back to haunt them which is a very basic premise and yeah that is kind of what this book is because I've actually already read this one as well. This one is a bit more about the psychological aspect than the actual like graphic murder mystery aspect. Um, but I still, I very much enjoyed it, but that review will come in a future video. I just had to buy this one because I love Karen Slaughter and whenever she comes with a new release, I do really want to read it, especially because False Witness is a standalone novel and a lot of her books are actually part of a uh, series with individual like murder cases. So whenever there's a standalone, I definitely want to read it because um, that just makes it so much more fun in my opinion. I usually like a standalone thriller and yeah, False Witness, very happy that I got it as well. And uh, this was a fun one as well. I also bought uh, We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker, another thriller. And this one is about a man named Vincent King, who 30 years ago, when he was a teenager, he killed somebody. But now he has been released from prison and not everybody is very happy with that. Like his um, ex-girlfriend named Star, who is also the sister of the girl that he killed. And then there's also Star's daughter named Duchess. Um, yeah, who is not completely sure what is going on. So that sounds like a very interesting premise for a thriller. And I already cannot wait to find out what has happened, why it has happened, because with a premise like this, I kind of feel like there's more to the story than just a man killing somebody. Like, what is the history? What has happened? Cannot wait to find out. So very excited about this trailer as well. It sounds like a fun one. I have heard a lot of reviews about it, but I'm just very intrigued with this story. I also got some uh, sci-fi books, and with some I mean two sci-fi books. The first one being uh, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I'm guessing this is kind of sci-fi because the premise is that it's about Clara, who is this artificial robots question mark and that is also everything that i know about the premise but usually when something features like artificial intelligence or a robot or whatever not completely sure if she's actually a robot just an artificial being to be honest but something like that sounds sci-fi ish to me and i'm not exactly sure why i bought this but except for the fact that i saw that it was a new release and i do love things that are sort of sci-fi every once in a while but i truly uh, have no idea what i'm in for uh, i haven't heard a lot of reviews about it yet uh, but it sounds intriguing and um, yeah I do hope that it will be fun and interesting and everything that I hope it will be. <laughs> and I also bought Hail Mary by Andy Ware which I purely bought because um, Andy Ware is the author of The Martian which is a book that I read many years ago and that I really enjoyed. I did not even look at the premise. I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. I only heard that this book was better than his other release from which I've forgotten the name of. So I was just like, you know what? Let's give Andy Ware another chance. Let's see if this book is something fun. Uh, from what I've gathered, it's like about a soul survivor who has to save the earth. I'm not really sure. It's very sci-fi-ish. There is space travel from, yeah, I guess I know. I'm not really sure, but it is sci-fi. It is Andy Ware. I hope that will be enough for it to make it a very enjoyable book for me. Then I have a couple of books that I actually have kind of hauled in videos before because in the past couple of months I went on two major book shopping trips. The first one being in Amsterdam. I went to Amsterdam and I have an entire book shopping vlog of that. I will leave a link in the description box down below if you want to watch it. And I also hauled the books that I'm going to talk about now. But I'm going to show you to them again because who knows maybe you have not watched that video and um 
I don't know. I'm just going to talk about them very quickly again, not too long. The first book that I bought in Amsterdam is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This entire book is apparently a letter from a son to his mother and it tells about his history or rather their family history in Vietnam. So this is a rather short book, but it's historical fiction and it sounds very emotional and tragic. I've heard a lot of positive reviews about it and that is basically why I picked it up in the bookstore in Amsterdam. The next one that I bought is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier, probably mispronouncing that. And it's about a 38 year old woman named Violet who has lost her fiance and her brother in World War I. So now she has to make a new life for herself. So it's again, another historical fiction novel, which as you probably know, I very much love. Never heard about this one before. I saw it in a bookstore, but it sounds Again, beautiful and definitely the kind of historical fiction that I usually very much enjoy. I also got All Adults Here by Emma Straub, which is about a mother named Astrid who has three adult children, but apparently they don't act very adult. This one I picked up because I kept seeing it in bookstores and it just kind of yelled at me, like, pick me, buy me. And I gave in in Amsterdam, so I decided to buy it. I do love a good novel that features some family dynamics and that kind of has some family, I don't know, arguments and things like that. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of personal drama and I do really love that. So hopefully this one will be a good one as well. And the last one from Amsterdam is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, which is about a woman who is an influencer. She is famous on social media, but then something very tragic happens in her personal life and it's about how social media can be very difficult when it comes to that. This one um, I also heard about before, but I also think that the cover is just stunning. I love the color scheme of it and just, I don't know, the pastel colors. I'm so in love with it. And that is also one of the reasons why I picked it up. But I haven't read a lot of books that feature like social media or being an influencer before. So that should be fun. I also went to Paris about a month ago with my mother, which was so much fun. But in Paris, I went to Shakespeare and Company because of course I had to. It's a very famous bookshop. I also posted a video about that one with a bookstore vlog and again, a haul. But again, I will quickly show you these books again. And if you like, don't want to see them again feel free to skip this part like i won't judge you but the first book that i bought in paris was the margot affair by sané limon i hope i pronounced that right again probably not this is about a teenage girl named margot and her father is like a very influential famous french politician but margot is actually his secret love child like her and her mother are his secret so yeah, that is uh, kind of interesting. I bought this one because it takes place in Paris and I was in Paris. So I just felt like I had to buy a book that took place in Paris. So that is kind of the whole story behind this purchase. I also bought another historical uh, fiction book that is called Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. The blurb says that uh, born in a bathtub in 1954 to a white mother and a Cherokee father, Betty inhabits a world of poverty and loss of lush, lush, landscape, lush landscapes and blazing stars. So it's about this girl named Betty and her hardships. And apparently Tiffany McDaniel is actually Betty's daughter. So it is definitely based on a true story. So kind of historical fiction, kind of real history. It sounds like something that is just completely something that I will love. Wow, that was a great sentence. Great job, Michelle. <laughs> but you probably get my meaning. Uh, everything that has to do with historical elements I just, I am a sucker for. I will always buy, I will always enjoy. And this one is definitely uh, something that fit that description. And the last book that I bought in Paris is Luck and Boot by Jenny Fagan. And this is one of the creepiest sounding weirdest sounding books that I've ever heard of because apparently it's about this house. The address is 10 Lock and Boot Close and this is a cursed house and everybody who lives there is cursed because back in 1910 there was this girl named Jessie who is the daughter of the devil and who had to go to that house to bear a child for the couple who lived there but then everything went wrong and she placed a curse on the house it's so weird like the premise sounds so weird but i love it i'm so here for it it is perfect for it this autumn so i want to read this one soon and um yeah this was definitely a very weird purchase because i'd never heard about it before but i was so intrigued by that very weird premise. The next category is mythology and kind of mythology inspired books. Not only inspired, it's also about mythology in general. Anyway, let's get started with this bit. Uh, the first book that I got in this category is Pandora's Jar 
Women in Greek Myths by Natalie Haynes. So this is all about women in Greek myths. It's very much what it says it is. Natalie Haynes is an expert in uh, ancient history and Greek mythology and such. She has also written A Thousand Ships, which apparently is very good. But I still have not read it yet, even though I've owned a copy of the book for years now. So even though I'm not familiar with her actual writing, like I haven't actually read her actual writing, I still bought another one of her books because I love books about Greek mythology. And this one has a particular focus on women in Greek mythology. So what is there not to enjoy about it? Another book that I bought that I feel is kind of mythology-ish is... A sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is about three sisters and they are sort of entangled in this web of lies and betrayal as it says on the back of the book. And they're also the daughters of a king. So there's very much like fantasy, adventure, mythology, things like that. I think I saw this book a couple of times on some booktube channels even though I cannot remember which ones. I'm so sorry. But what I heard about it sounded positive and uh, definitely very adventurous and yeah, mystical, I guess. And then I also got one that I'm so excited about because that is Mythology, Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes by Edith Hamilton. And it's also an illustrated edition. So this is kind of like a famous book when it comes to mythology books. And it just tells you so many stories about myths and legends and things like that. And this edition is heavy. It's beautiful. It has like, apparently it has illustrations inside and it's just, it looks gorgeous and i got this one because usually it is a bit more expensive but it was in the sale on amazon it was only eight euros which is not a lot for a beautiful beautiful book like this this is not really a book that i think i'm going to read from start to finish but more like a book that i will just grab and uh, you know go through some of these stories every once in a while and yeah again i love mythology and i felt like this is just such a staple in my mythology collection and who very excited about this and I'm also very very excited that I got it at such a good price because I feel like it's definitely worth it oh it's just it's heavy but it's very beautiful of course I also got some fantasy books in the past couple of months because I definitely love fantasy very much one book that I got is Legendborn by Tracy Dion and this one I've heard so many positive stories about it and apparently it's so good. So I just really, really wanted to buy it. And the premise says that after her mother dies in an accident, 16-year-old Brie Matthews wants to escape. A residential program for bright high schoolers seems like the perfect opportunity until she witnesses her very first magical attack on her very first night of campus. And that is also where she discovers that she has magical abilities of her own and that there are other people with magical abilities and they are called Legendborn. To be honest, it sounds like quite a generic premise to me, like a very generic YA fantasy premise. I've heard stories like this many times before, but the main reason that I decided to buy it is because of all the positive reviews, which makes me think that it's going to be a lot more than just your average YA fantasy book. And I am curious, I'm intrigued. I really hope that I will love it just as much as everybody else seems to do. Um, because I do love a good fantasy every once in a while. I also bought some new um, Robin Hobb books, or like new to me, they're not new in new releases, uh, but I bought book two and three in the Ship of Magic series, which is the Mad Ship and the Ship of Destiny. I already own the first book, even though I have not read it yet. The only thing that I know about it is that it's a pirate fantasy book, and it takes place in the robin hobb universe it kind of ties in with the farsa trilogy and it kind of takes place in the same universe i got these because i was reading robin hobb two months ago i was very very much enjoying it it was amazing um, and i was just in such a book buying mood that i just bought the rest of the series of the um mad magic ship series wait the life ship traders that's what the series is called okay so yeah you know don't have much to say about it because i have not read them yet but they are massive they are gorgeous and they are very heavy then in the category of non-fiction i bought uh, invisible women by caroline carido perez this book says it's about exposing data bias in a world designed for men so <laughs> I guess it's very much what it says it is. A book about how the world is designed by men for men. Which is no secret, I think. I think we all know that is very much true. And what I saw on the background, it's like, imagine a world where your phone is too big for your hand, your doctor prescribes a drug that is wrong for your body, 
And in a car accident, you are 74%, no, 47% more likely to be seriously injured. So it's about all these things that you might not even think about on a daily basis, but that are actually quite crazy when you do think about it, because the world is so much designed for men. It's, it's so crazy. And this book is about that, and it kind of unfolds that and opens your eyes in how extreme this situation actually is. At least that is what I've gathered from um, kind of the premise and the reviews that I've seen. So yeah, nonfiction, I think it's going to be very, very informational and um, I cannot wait to pick it up. Another nonfiction is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, which I bought because it sounded so interesting and I really want to know more about sleep. This book is again very self-explanatory. It's about the concept of sleep why we do it, how it works, how you can get the best kind of sleep. I love sleeping. I mean, who doesn't, to be honest? Uh, and I cannot wait to learn more about it and learn more facts, things that might help me to sleep better. And um, yeah, I think it's just nice to learn something about different topics every once in a while, just because, you know, just because you can. And um, yeah, I heard a lot of good reviews about it because when I talked about it in a TBR video, I got so many comments on like, oh wow, that's such a good book, I love it. So that sounds very promising indeed. It wouldn't be a true book haul of mine if there wasn't at least some historical fiction involved. There was already some in my Amsterdam and Paris um, book hauls, but now we're going to talk more about more historical fiction because, you know, what else are you going to expect from my book hauls? One book that I bought is My Policeman by Betten Roberts, which takes place in the 1950s. It's about a woman named Marion and a guy named Patrick, and both of them meet and fall in love with a policeman named Tom. And Tom marries Marion because, of course, that is a whole lot safer in this time period. But he's actually in love with Patrick. So there's kind of this... Um, vibe about having to share this one person. I got this one because Jack from like Jack Edwards um, talked about it in one of his videos and I've been on a binge of his videos because he's so funny and he makes amazing videos and he has the best recommendations and he really loved this book and I was completely um, yeah intrigued by the premise instantly so I just bought it immediately and I cannot wait to see how this is going to go with a premise like that I assume there's going to be some um, tragedy and some emotions uh, because like it's just impossible for all of them to get what they want or I'm not sure maybe that is the case who knows but it sounds like a beautiful story and historical 1950s very much ready for this I also recently bought Pachinko by Min Jin Lee and this is a book that I've seen a lot for many years or like many years a couple of years but i never actually picked it up but now a couple of months ago i decided to buy it because i discovered that it actually is historical fiction and it takes place in korea uh, it starts in 1911 it's about a very beautiful girl who marries a much older man and they have one daughter and this daughter um, has to go to japan to marry a christian minister uh, for a new life like there's so much going on in this short premise already it takes place over a longer time period and it's about multiple generations with I, which i just love so much in a historical fiction book and this book at this point is quite well known quite famous and very much beloved and there are many positive stories about it again historical fiction what else can i say it sounds perfect for me next is my contrary mary by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. You probably know the names of those authors if you've seen previous videos of mine because these are the authors of My Lady Jane and a couple of other um, like Jane related books. Their thing is that they take historical, um, well, first of all, Janes, but now apparently a Mary, and they tell their story, but they completely twist it, make it really funny, and also there is some kind of magic involved. My Contrary Mary is about uh, Mary Queen of Scots or Mary Stuart, and it's kind of a sequel to My Lady Jane because it takes place in the same time period. It's like the Tudor era, in England at least, not in Scotland obviously, even though Mary Queen of Scots was in France for a very long time. Anyway, <laughs> there's just a whole lot of history that I already do know, but in this universe, or the true historical uh, story of our universe. Apparently, there are no Catholics and Protestants, but there are Etians and Verities. And Etians can transform into animals, and Verities think that people who transform into animals should be burned at the stake. So they incorporated the concept of Protestants and Catholics, but they left out all religious aspects, which I really love. And it's just so funny. This 
these books they are hilarious and this is a new one my contrary mary i'm very excited for this one because it takes place in the tudor era and just like my favorite piece of history and i cannot wait to just laugh again because this book will make you laugh so much it's hilarious it's funny it's such a feel feel good story at least my lady jane was i don't know about this one but i hope it will be the case as well <laughs> now to demonstrate how long it has actually been since i've done a book haul um this one also features malibu rising by taylor jenkins reid i don't think this one needs much of an explanation at this point because taylor jenkins reid very popular everybody has talked about it already malibu rising her release that came out in april or was it may not really sure anyway this one just has been on my shelves a long time. I've already read it. I loved it. It's amazing. It's about um, a model named Nina Riva and her siblings. There's this party. The house burns down. But you know that as a reader at the beginning, but the characters don't know that yet. Much fun. Love Taylor Jenkins Reid. We'll always love her. I also bought Utopia Avenue by uh, David Mitchell, which is about a UK-based band in the 1960s, a British band that you've never heard of but the most famous band that you've never heard of and it's their story it sounds very similar to like the vibe of daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins Reid. you know an old band 1960s maybe 1970s kind of that era kind of that vibe don't know anything about it apart from that i just really love the atmosphere and the idea of it i also purchased the water dancer by ta nessie coates and this is about a um, slave named hiram walker when his mother is sold away he discovers that he has this very mysterious power that is related to water and then it follows his life in um you know the deep south in i don't really know the time period but you know um 19 17th century no 19th century I've been talking for so long, my brain is now messed up. Apologies. But it is kind of historical fiction with a magical twist. Sounds beautiful, sounds emotional, sounds tragic. And um, that's really all I have to say about it at this point. Um, I still have to read it, of course. So, yeah. But my hopes are high for it because, again, it sounds like a story that I will very much enjoy. And then for the final category of this book haul, which is just random books that I did not know how to categorize um we're at the final bit trust me we're almost there i'm saying this to myself as well because i've been talking for a long time at this point um but yeah let's continue so i have the firekeeper's daughter or just firekeeper's daughter by angeline bully this is about a girl named donis who um, lives at a reservation in the united states and she is indigenous it's about something that goes on on their reservation in their community there is an fbi agent involved drugs related deaths um you know lots of things that are going on with this one i will admit i was very much drawn to it by the cover because the cover is stunning i love the illustrations i love the colors and then the story sounded like something that i have never read about before which i think makes it a very good thing that i will read about it so i can maybe see something else a new perspective a new story and i really do hope that it will be a beautiful story and it will be beautifully told and yeah i don't know if this book is ya or not because at the bookstore it was featured at both the adult section and the ya section so i'm not exactly sure um maybe something in between who knows it is quite a big one bigger than i had expected originally but i really hope this story will uh leave an impact on me another new release which is ace of spades by uh farida abike iamide which i completely butchered the name i'm so sorry this is a dark academia book that takes place in a high school and it's kind of Pretty Little Liars and Gossip Girl rolled into one because there's this secret person named Ace who starts texting people and says that he knows their secrets. So there is a lot going on. Um, with this book, when I first heard about it, I was like, well, yeah, all right, it sounds okay. But the reviews have been insane and apparently it is so good. And I do love Dark Academia and I do love this whole atmosphere and this whole vibe. So that is why I decided to buy it, decided to pick it up. And I want to read it this autumn because um, it sounds like it's going to be so much fun and so mysterious. And so, I don't know, very excited about it. Next up, I have Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, which is about a set of twins, a boy and a girl, or like 
a man and a woman because they're 51. They live on this farm with their mother, but then their mother dies and then they don't really know what to do with themselves. It sounds weird. To be honest, I don't have a lot of things to say about it because I cannot really explain why I decided to buy it. Maybe because it sounded a bit weird. I hope they will be okay. I'm not sure if this book is creepy or if it's going to be emotional. I have absolutely no clue. But you know, that can be fun as well to have a book that you just, you don't even know what kind of genre it is when you go into it. So who knows what I'm in for. Um, I'm going to be very surprised, I think. I also bought Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, which is a classic. And it's about a man named David who meets the sensual Giovanni in uh, Paris. And they have an affair, but then his girlfriend returns. And I've heard that this is a very, very good classic and very beautiful. I don't buy a lot of classics. I don't read a lot of classics, but I do want to change that. So um, that is where this book came in. So um, it's a short one, which is also nice because I think that I need a short book every once in a while. Then the final book, we're finally there. Oh, I already showed it, but yeah, we made it. But that is a Dutch book by a Dutch author. And that is a Popover by Annie Corporaal. This book is about a girl named Jess who works at a company, but she's kind of the type who everybody just ignore she's kind of invisible but she actually makes use of that by stealing money from the company where she works so sounds interesting sounds weird uh it's dutch dutch author so not everybody that watches this video can read it but it sounds fun to me and i also like that this book matches perfectly with the dress that i'm wearing right now which is you know not really relevant to the premise or what this book is about, but it's still fun to mention. So we're finally there. I felt like filming this video <laughs> took forever, but we're here and uh, we made it through this massive book haul. I really hope that you enjoyed it uh, and that it's going to be a fun video for you or that it was a fun video for you. I mean, I hope it's going to be a fun video for me to edit. You know, I don't think I will do book hauls of this size <laughs> anytime soon because this took me a while to accumulate accumulate wow i i just should stop talking now because my brain is just not working anymore but yeah i don't think i will do a book haul this big anytime soon because um it is quite a pain in the ass to film let's be honest but it was also fun and it's nice to talk about all of these books and i feel so lucky to have all of these books and to be able to read all of them hopefully soon you know, you never know how it's going to go. If you like this video, then um, you can always subscribe or give it a like, leave a comment. I love to read comments. Like, please leave a comment if you have anything to say. Even if you don't have anything interesting to say, I would still love to read it. Just say whatever you want. I just love the interactions. And again, you can also subscribe if you want to see more content. And yeah, that was it. And hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. And until then, bye.